welcome to the Business of Property podcast. I'm Simon. And I'm Simon. I've been investing in property for over 20 years. And if you're an active landlord or planning your next property investment, this podcast is for you. And today I'm joined by Simon, who is an independent mortgage broker with 25 years of experience providing mortgages, bridging and development finance for home buyers and investors. Now, before we get into the episode, if you are willing and able to leave a, a rating or review in your podcast player of choice, I would very much appreciate that. It really does help other people to, to find this podcast and enjoy listening. So we've got a, a few topics that we're going to go through today, all mortgage related, of course, because of uh, Simon's wonderful expertise in the area. And uh, I'm just going to tease that we will have a, a roundup of sort of current mortgage rates towards the end of the podcast, so, so do do listen all the way through for that. But to start with, we, we of course have to talk about Bank of England base rates. Now, when we last recorded, I, I asked Simon to speculate on what he thought might be coming up in the next Bank of England review. And, and he, he suggested that maybe that we might be in line for a, a reduction. And this is the review that happened in May, so it, ha- it has now happened. And about maybe a few days, maybe a week after we recorded the last episode, I started seeing stories come out saying, mm, it might be a bit longer before the Bank of England base rate goes down. Uh, and sure enough, it, it, it didn't change in May. So <laughs> hopefully, we're, we're going to do better today. <laughs> what, what, what do you think, Simon? What, what's on the cards? <laughs> Yes, I'm, um, I'm, I'm clearly not a betting man, Simon. Great to be here again this month. Um, where are we going to go with it? it it's, it's a very difficult uh, question to answer. And, and clearly, the Bank of England are being very, very careful on, on this one. It's a question I'm being asked on a daily basis. Um, uh, for most clients, it's, the, it's a, the, the first thing they ask me. Um, where do I think it's going to go? Is it going to come down? Or the expectation, because of the media, the expectation is that it it should have already been come, you know come down already, um, and because it's it, I suppose it makes good headlines. Um, it's as simple <laughs> as that because it's a good news story. Um, however, um, the the wording coming out of uh, Bank of England is that. Inflation needs to, um, well, the wording exactly from one of the Bank of England is inflation must continue to wane before rate cut. Now, reading to what that word, what you may on that one, how long is that going to be? Um, someone else from the Bank of England said base rate cut over the summer, not unreasonable. It's very rare, however, very, very rare that um, uh, Bank of England base rate gets cut um, in August, I believe. Um, now that's it's sort of historical. So we've got, is it going to come down before that time? Are we then looking, you then go to September and then you're looking towards autumn. Um, so you know, we're, we're then at, we're 5.25. Is it going to change much? If they're being so guarded with the rate cuts or potential rate cuts we're looking at, is it going to come down very much? You know, is it, it will it come down the four quarter percent will it be less than that? It has been known. Um, are they just going to be guarding and keep it where it is for 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 much longer? Um, it's a really really difficult one. Um, you're not. I I I just can't see where it's going at the moment. Um, part mm. of me says I think it's going to be staying like this now for the summer um, because they're they're just being so conservative. Well, I've got to do a, a remortgage uh, in the next four months, I think. Um, so I am really hoping that we're going to see very rapid reductions in, in the base rate in, in the next two months, maybe three months, to, to, to squeeze in <laughs> as much as possible before I have to do that remortgage. So, so that, 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 that's where I'm, I'm hoping, but, but we shall see. So given that the, the base rate didn't change in May, did we see any changes in in sort of the actual mortgages that are available? I mean, not not, not actual numbers. We'll go into those later on, but just an, an overall picture. Yeah. Um, yes. It, it's again. It's been. I think we touched on this last month. Um, it's been a strange old time for the lenders. Um, 
one week you'll see them, they'll, they're putting rates up. Then they'll make a, a big song and dance about dropping fixed rates again. Um, just yesterday, we had, um, as everybody seemed to be putting rates up again. Now, these are not huge increases, but they're enough to make a difference, of course. Um, but just yesterday, we saw HSBC and Barclays reduce rates again. Um, pretty much across the board on the on the Barclays range anyway. Um, so, but if you look back, and, and I look back, um, and we'll go through rates later, over the sort of last six months, hasn't drastically changed. Um, they've gone up slightly, they've come down slightly. So they're just, they're, for whatever reason, we don't know what that reason is. One reason is certainly they're, they're not curtailing business and trying to keep control of it, because we know they're not doing anywhere near the business they were before the rates started going up. Um, that's that we definitely know. Um, and we can, we know that also about service. We can tell if um, a lender is getting an awful lot of business through the doors because the service drops dramatically very, very quickly. And we get it um, back from clients. Why am I not, not getting the update? Why am I not getting my offer through? Why is evaluation not being booked? Um, and that's immediate and that can happen very quickly if they've got too much work on, which clearly that isn't the case. Pretty much can't think of a lender at the moment who has um, poor service because they clearly they've just got they just haven't got the business going through the door. So it's always a good indication. Um, so they haven't really changed. I mean, they'll, they'll come out with with headlines like Barclays and HSBC did yesterday. Oh, we're dropping rates again. Great. Yeah, but you put them up two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a bit like the, the sales in the shops that are always on, except for that one week each year when they increase all the prices. <laughs> it's just so they can <laughs> yeah. say everything, everything else is on sale. Yeah. So it, if if we do manage to get a base rate reduction sort of over summer in the next couple of months, maybe before summer, in fact, do you think that will actually have a, an effect on on the mortgages that are available? Will Will they instantly reflect the, the reduction themselves or, or do you think they might actually just sort of keep going as they are um i think the the two-year rate you might see a reduction in i mean it's it is it has been um very unusual times that the two-year rate is higher and still is than a five-year fixed rate now that's the that's the bank's pricing in changes happening over the, over the coming years so they are obviously thinking that rates, base rates going to be coming down in a number of years or in the future at some point because they've priced that in. Um, if that's, you know, they don't have to be correct, but that's the expectation. I would think if the race rates come down, the two year rates are then going to follow fairly quickly. Now, banks generally, they'll obviously change their tracker rates immediately um, because it's, it's following the Bank of England base rate. But the fixed rates, on average, they usually take a couple of weeks before they the banks have to look at them. They reprice them. They see where their margins are, and then they and then they launch. Um, so it's never immediate, but within a couple of weeks. So for the likes of yourself, if you've got this, if you've got something coming up in the next three, four, five, six months, now we we contact all of our clients six months in advance because. Most mortgage lenders will have a mortgage offer that lasts for six months. So the, the, the benefit there is it's not going to make any difference to you guys, but you've locked into a rate now if, and in certainly from um, uh, our side, what we then do is we monitor that all the way through those six months, right up until completion to make sure you're still on the, on the lower rate. And if, you, if there is a rate that comes in that's lower, then we'll switch you over. Um, fairly easy to do, uh, certainly from our side, and and that's something. But at least you're locked in on a rate now. Um, you 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 know. But I, I would certainly expect something to come down bef between now and then. Um, but in your case, jump on something now is the is certainly the uh, uh, the word of the day. Yeah, that, that's a bit scary. Thinking that that maybe I should grab grab the current rate just in case it gets worse. And I'm, even worse. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> But yes, yes, I probably should just, just, just in case. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would go with that. I mean, it's very unlikely, isn't it, that it's going to get any worse? But you, we just, you just never know. Um, 
like I say, with anybody, and and I do find people who are in your situation exactly that, and think of right, okay, I wait, I wait, I wait. There's no point in waiting whatsoever because you're not going to be any worse off. Um, you can, and and if even if you have another lender has a better rate, you can switch over if you have the time. Uh, in the you know between now and then, it's not the end of the world. You will be a, a headache for the broker, but then that's our job. You know, if if you have a if we've recommended a product and then another lender brings out another product and we've got time to change it over and it hasn't cost you money, um, we we'll, we will change over. Any decent broker will do that for you and look out for you. Um, so, yeah, yeah. what I would say to anybody looking for that, jump in now um, and and certainly look at it. And that's the same with I mean um, with product transfers. That's come to the forefront as well. People going. Um, it's very frustrating on our side. One of the issues, of course, is we're we're losing business. If if you've got something flown up on your text on your phone and you said, "Hi, oh, this is Halifax or whoever it may be," this is your you know your rate is expiring. Here's your new rates we've got on offer. Oh, quick! I better press that. They're not people are not taking any advice on that at all. And what I can assure you is that lender will not keep an eye on the best rate for you between now and three, six months time. They're locked you in and they're very happy with that. Um, it generally doesn't cost you with a broker um, to to product to, to rate switch, product transfer, whatever you want to call it. Um, generally, unless it's a specific case, it's a, it, 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 some lenders are very difficult to deal with with product transfers but most in the majority it won't cost you anything different if you go direct and what you do have from a broker is you will we will keep an eye on that rate for you and like you say the likelihood is and it's likely again i didn't i didn't guess last time correctly but let's hope well, then, um, this time the likelihood is it's going to come down between now and three six months time yep oh, i'll keep my fingers crossed <laughs> So moving on from from the uh, excitement of, of rates and trying to predict the future, <laughs> um, we thought we might have a, a little look at some some more general purpose uh, advice and sort of education for for everyone listening. And today we thought we'd we'd look specifically at limited company mortgages. So there are literally millions of people out there who have been through a mortgage application for themselves personally, be that for their own home or for a buy-to-let. But these days, if you're buying a new buy-to-let property, the chances are you will probably be looking to buy it in a limited company rather than in your own personal name. So I thought it'd be good if we could chat a little bit about what some of the differences are between those processes, because when you've got that extra entity there, that, that limited company, beyond just you as a, an individual, I, I know there are there are differences. Mortgage lenders presumably want some slightly different paperwork and, and may have different processes involved in, in the actual application. So uh, as the expert, Simon, over to you. What, what should people expect with a limited company mortgage that they may not have seen before? I think that this, is a, this is a great question, a great topic. Um, Limited company buy to lets came in or, or really sort of hit us probably about five years ago, I would say. Um, time flies, but something like that, where previously of no, of, of no interest to people generally um, uh, and, and mainly because of the tax breaks. It, it, was, just, it was as simple as that. Yeah. So yeah. Lot, lots of people now, even if they're buying one, two buy to lets in a portfolio are going down the limited company route. Um, it's number one, I would say people haven't got a limited company. By to, it's not scary. Do not worry if you if you're and it usually scares people if they've never had a limited company before, if they've been PAY all of their life and an employee um, have no you know, idea of what to do. It's very simple and we can talk you through it. It, it really is. Now, the the main benefit I would say of a limited company buy to let is the as the stress testing. We've we've seen this before. We've discussed this before. And the stress testing being how much rental you can get dictates generally how much uh, the mortgage company will will uh, lend you. Now, 
they will lend more on a limited company buy to let in general this is a this is a general sort of uh, conversation here so there are so many different mortgage companies out there they all have their little quirks and um so but let's say in general if you have a limited company buy to let you will generally be able to borrow more than if you just did it in a sole name um that's a huge benefit because with interest rates going up um we're seeing on a, in a sole name people having to put 50 percent deposit down Whereas in a limited company, I would be disappointed if I if the client has to put more than twenty five thirty percent in. Um, so yeah. that's the, that's the key issue here with regard to or, or the key benefit. Um, obviously, there's tax breaks you can have through a limited company. Again, I'm not a tax expert, um, so you need to speak to your accountant about that. But I'm yet to come across an accountant who says anything other than you should buy it in a limited company name. You can only go by the rules that, that are set out at the moment by HMRC. So we don't know what's down the road. Um, and with everybody buying through a limited company, it's probably only a matter of time before they look at that too. But no, you, no, don't say that. No, <laughs> I'm making you really changes. happy today. Sorry. <laughs> um, but it's let's, you know, there, there's nothing to say that's going to happen at the moment, but you never know what's down the line. So we can only go by what we can do at the moment. With regard to um, paperwork and additional paperwork, um, again, it depends from lender to lender. Um, the the limited company you are buying it through doesn't get um, uh, credit checked or scored um, because nine times out of ten, it's very new. Um, <laughs> it's very rare, um, although I did have one this week where it is a – or last week – where a client has had the limited company SPV for probably 10 years. So they did want to see the accounts. They did want to see, um, look into it. It was a fairly large portfolio um, of 40-ish properties. Um, so they wanted to see that that was going um, uh, according to plan. So that you can kind of understand that. But generally, they won't ask much about the company. Um, the paperwork-wise is pretty much the same as, as any other buy to let. You'll generally be asked to, as a minimum, provide um, statements seeing rental income. Um, they rarely ask to see tenancy agreements now. Some lenders will, will randomly pick and say, can you provide us one or two um, just to see you've got those in order. Um, but otherwise, they'll want to see proof. Some will want to see proof of, of income, be it self-employed or employed. Um, but other than that, not saying that they they would need a minimum income, but they want to see you or, you know, you, you, you can keep yourself afloat if you have any any uh, tenants who who don't pay or that's that's the reasoning behind it. That's another question I generally get asked. Well, what you know, why do I need to provide an income? It's coming from the rental. Um, uh, actually, some tenants don't pay. So they just want to see you can you can look after the property and yeah. maintain them. That's mm -hmm. the thing what happens it's your responsibility at the end of the day do they do they ask for sort of written personal guarantees as well sort of be beyond standard sort of agreements good, with good the limited company question yes um is the answer um there are a couple of lenders who won't ask for uh, personal guarantees generally speaking they are slightly higher in re interest rates but there are some people out there who do not, under any circumstances, want to have a personal guarantee. That may, for any reason, that may get you know, complicated tax reasons or whatever it may, it may be. But generally, um, they will ask for a personal guarantee, um, which is, if you if you would have bought it in your own name, it would have been exactly the same or, or nigh on the same anyway. So I would, it shouldn't really be anything you would be. Uh, too concerned about but yes you will be asked uh, uh, to make a guarantee on their behalf so it sounds like there isn't really much extra so presumably you you need to sort of prove that your limited company is is a company and that you, you own it and presumably you have to sort of provide bank statements and, and stuff for uh, as part of that process and it sounds like you you also still need to go through all the kind of stuff you would as a personal individual in order to help with showing that you've got that that separate income and and can support it 
outside the company and things as well. So presumably you're, you're still also providing your your own personal tax return and bank statements and, and all, all that side of things as well. Yes, there's, there's no no reduction on, on that side, is there? No, absolutely not. It's it's pretty much, well, it is. It's like getting a, a buy to let in your own name. Um, more lenders are looking at income proof um, for buy to lets. We take it as standard um, across the board. So, for example, very standard with a mortgage. If you're employed, we'll take three or four months pay slips. Um, we always back that up with personal bank statements showing that salary credit. Um, if you're self-employed, we will take your tax calculations and your tax year overviews for the last three years. Um, that's pretty much the basics. Um, and most buy select lenders will want to see that now. There are there are some who don't, but then they reserve the right at a later date to come back to us as a broker to make sure that we have it on file. So for us, don't you know, or for anybody out there who's looking at that, why do you need them? Well, generally because we can get asked that at a later date. Um, and we need to prove that y y what you're telling us is correct. You know, there are some, strangely enough, there are some people out there who don't tell us the truth. Um, so we need it. We need to make sure we're we're compliant on our side um, and that we're doing everything we can. But it, yeah, on that, so you may get asked a, a few more questions on a limited company. I think the going on slightly from that, again, there were more information if required if you're a portfolio landlord now a portfolio landlord yeah. on uh with regard to a lender is generally if you have four or more mortgaged properties as a buy to let okay not including your residential but it's usually some there are a few lenders who class that as three or more but generally if a general rule is four or more now that what you have to be a little bit careful for in this marketplace is that some lenders will stress test your whole portfolio to make sure that's working. If that doesn't meet their stress test, the the application just will not go through. Um, it the, the stress test is slightly easier than their standard stress tests. I haven't had personally a huge amount of issues with it, um, just the odd one here or there. Um, but something again to watch out for. And then uh, with regard to paperwork, yes, I mean, we provide a, a, a spreadsheet here. Um, that goes on to our client portal, listing all of your uh, all of your mortgages and all of, uh, all of the uh, balances, rentals, etc. Again, people ask, well, why do you need that? It's nothing to do with this. Well, yes, because the lender will ask every single time how many properties you have, the mortgage balance, the value, the rental, uh, the mortgage payment, who it's with. So we have to provide them with all that information or the application will just get declined. Um, yeah, yeah. So it, that's that's an important one. A lot more <laughs> headache for a game for us because it's it was somebody who has a huge amount of property in their portfolio. Um, it's a lot of work. But then, you know, well, that's I'll, just the way it is. I'll, I'll interject and just, just put a little plug in for, for Patma Property Manager. So if you're using that to manage your, your properties and track all your, your details, you can just click a button and it'll download that spreadsheet for you. It might not be exactly in your, your template, but it should have all of the information that, that mortgage brokers need in there. So, Yeah, I'll absolutely. That and that's from a broker side, Simon, that's perfect. Um, you would be you'd be really surprised um, how many people we talk to um, have it literally on a word document. Um, saying, yeah, that, well, that wouldn't think, surprise me at all, actually. <laughs> no, and yeah, and you, and I'm, I'm amazed with the, with you know, the amount of properties they have. Oh, oh, and it's, oh, yeah, I know that. I think my mortgage payment is this, and I think we get about <laughs> seven hundred pounds for that property. Then, wow, um, and it's so easy to do. We, we have, we, we do nothing. You know, we, we put it all on a spreadsheet, which is, which is fairly simple because that's the, the information that goes to the lender. Yeah. But with something like Patma, you know it would be so easy we could just say right okay can we have that whiz it over to us save so much time on everybody for everybody um yeah. it really yeah. really does indeed so speaking of time one li last little question on this it sounds like there isn't that much extra with a limited company application but are the lenders doing much extra work does it take them longer to process a, a limited company application um 
Yeah, oh, that's a good question. I'm I'm guessing on behalf of the lender. Um, do they take any longer? I, I suppose yes. Um, they certainly on the portfolio side, um, a hundred percent, because most of the broker portals we use to put all the applications in, they're quite simplistic. I think you would be quite amazed how poor most of them are. Um, some haven't changed for 10 years. Um, and they're pretty horrendous. Um, so they don't have that, um, uh, that sort of ability to where it should, you'd think it should be automated. It's not. Um, some specialist lenders use an outside company where we have to input all the property details with an outside piece of software, which then goes, it then collates all the information, puts it, I think it automates it and then sends it to the, send it to the lender, which is quite good, but the software is horrendous. I hate it. Um, <laughs> but it, so it's, it's not quite as, simple as you you probably think uh, or should be um so yes i think they're kind of making their own uh, rod for their own back really i'm sure a lot of it could be simplified it isn't um and could save an awful lot of time but they don't uh, I, I, we keep being told if we if they re um you know create some new software or a broker portal for us it will cost millions of pounds um I'm not quite sure that happens these days with, <laughs> with the types of things they need. It's really not sophisticated. You can imagine what goes into an application. Don't really think it should, should cost them all that money, but I don't know. I'm a, I'm a mere mortgage broker. I'm not into IT. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to speculate, I'm afraid. <laughs> so I, I think to round up then, uh, if you're applying for a mortgage, your first mortgage in a limited company, it's going to be very similar to a personal mortgage application. It'll be a little bit extra you have to provide, but not very much. But it probably will take a little bit longer to get processed. So just, just allow a little bit of extra time in there. Yeah. So before we move on to our, our sort of roundup of current mortgage rates, we thought we'd just add in a, a, a little little quirky mention of of a product that you you've had to help provide in the last few weeks that you you don't don't get to do very often so do you want to tell us a bit more about that simon yeah this is this is an interesting one i thought we'd we'd uh, we'd like to talk about it's called joint borrower sole proprietor now this is certainly not something that comes across very often and it was more to do um it, more to do in the residential market really where people were buying we, we, many years ago people come to us and say can i be a guarantor for my son daughter etc um when everything crashed um and the banks wanted to repossess and wanted to go to the guarantors the guarantor said you're not having any money from me even though i guaranteed it um it's not worth the paper it's printed on surprising enough all the lenders pretty much scrapped guarantor mortgages. Now, this is something similar where you go on to a, 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 a and it works very similar for residential and buy to let. There are a couple of buy to let lenders out there who will do the same. So you go on to the mortgage as an applicant. So let me give you an example. Um, father, mother are employed. Um, couple of children at university and they feel like buying them a buy to let or going under into a, a you know into the buy to let world with them to get them on the property ladder good investment for the future fantastic but they don't want to go on to the um onto the deeds because they don't want to be an owner of the property for whatever reason usually tax so and again i'm not a tax expert this was something you have to deal with an accountant but that's usually the reason. So they're not the legal, not the legal owner of the property, but they go on to the uh, application as because of their of, for affordability. Now, again, some people might say, "Well, I, you don't need an income for some mortgage lenders." That's absolutely right. Um, but you don't need a minimum income. But they want you to be employed in some. Uh, uh, in some way, because just for for gaps and things, if you if you haven't got any income, and something happens to the property, the lender knows you're in trouble. 
um, and they they could go back to the lender. So that's a simple reason. So you can go. So it, it works really well for some people. It's very quirky. You can do it on a residential, um, which is more popular, but you can also do it as a buy to let. So for some people, it, maybe they want it in their in their wife's name who doesn't who doesn't work um, and wouldn't able be able to get that um, in an in a in her own right um, or a partner's name. It, it, it's just a it's a very quirky little um, uh, a product. Doesn't get used very often. Barclays are the ones who are very good at it in the buy to let market. Metro Bank very good at it in the residential market. Hmm. So presumably, sort of the, the difference between being a, a guarantor and a mortgage as they used to do is that in, in a guarantor, you're, the, the guarantor is sort of an, an extra agreement on top of it and sort of stands alone. Whereas in these products, you are actually signing the mortgage contract kind of thing. And, and you, you are, without being the owner of the property, taking on the responsibility for that mortgage directly. It, uh, did I understand that correctly? Is that Absolutely. That's they, uh, perfect. So it's, it's all about, um, previously, the guarantor was literally a document you then signed um, as, a, a, as, a, as a side issue, really, um, where this, you are, the, the lender is protected because you are an applicant on the mortgage contract. They're not as concerned. Um, I don't know the legalities, how they do it, but you're not a legal owner of the property. Um, so they're not concerned about that. They just want to say, right, okay, if if for whatever reason they need to repossess, because lenders, whatever, whatever mortgage product they look at, they look at worst case scenario. So if they're looking at worst case scenario and they need to repossess, they simply go, okay, um, you're on the mortgage and you I appreciate that person is at uni or doesn't work. You certainly are. We'll come to you. Um, so it, it's added an added layer of protection for the uh, for the mortgage lender. So they are happy um, and also the uh, the borrowers are happy. So, yeah, it's slightly it's an add on to where we were the guarantor. And it, and it makes a lot of sense. I can really see um, this taking off more and more. As we get into, it's harder and harder for first-time buyers to get on the market. They need either a uh, or either a bigger deposit, generally coming from bank of mum and dad. Um, so this is just a, a way of them probably not giving them so much money. But if they're if they have available income, then they were able to add this to the mortgage. Great product, it really is. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if we'll see see more lenders offering such things in the future. Mm, yeah they've got to come up with these things haven't they they've got to come up with something new not doing enough that they're not doing enough in the mortgage market at the moment so that i think although it's been around for a long time um it, it's something which has certainly come to the forefront at the, at the moment so we may may well see some more let's fingers crossed <laughs> righty-ho then so rounding up the, this episode is a, a quick look at the, the sort of current best mortgage rates that you can find out there so we, we've got a, a sort of standard collection that, that we run through. And although we are obviously focused on investment uh, on this podcast, we, we do always start off with a, uh, a homeowner rate. So what, what are uh, homeowners looking to, to be able to get in, in the mortgage market these days, Simon? Well, I'm, I'm just looking at comparing. I think that's, that's a good thing. We compare from month to month. And from last month to um, April to May, what you're seeing is that generally the rates have gone up slightly. Um, 0 0.2, 0 0.3% on the, on the fixed rates, pretty much across the board. So your, uh, your start of 10, um, two-year fixed rate at 75%. You're looking at 4.82 at the moment. In the residential market, this is, remember. Mm -hmm. um, and your five-year five fixed rate, 4.44. So 0 .4, around 0 0.4 lower. That's, again, common across the marketplace. Two years at fixed rates are still higher than five-year fixed rates. But they're in and around the good news. I mean, we've got to look at some good news. They're in and around the, the you know, they're in the lower end, higher end, four of the 4%. We're not in the 5% market um, of the fixed rates now. So that's got to be a little bit better. Although they do touch into the 5% if you have a smaller deposit. So if we jump up to 90%, so you're probably looking more the first time buyer market to your rate, to your rate of 5.19. Uh, 
So, but five five year rate of four point eight eight. I don't think that's horrendous. They are around the four. You know, they, they it does start with a four with some of those. Um, and like we said, it right at the beginning. I think this is. Are they going to change very much? I'm not sure they're going to an awful lot. Well, we'll we'll take the good news where we can. Starting with a Absolutely. four. Absolutely, that, that, that's good. Apparently. So <laughs> mo- moving on to to buy to let then. Um, so, Bytelet's in personal names and limited companies. Um, how are they they looking these days? Um, they are probably about um, as good news as you can get. The wonderful, very large fees are still there. Um, the best limited, so uh, uh, personal and limited company Bytelet is still three point seven four. Excellent! Everybody screams with a three. Yes, with a 7% fee. <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, would you go for that? I don't know. It, you've got to look. You know, if, you, if you had to change over lender, we said it before, and you, and you really wanted a low rate, maybe. Um, we haven't seen an awful lot of it, um, but they're trying to get out there. They're still there. Must be doing some business um, because they're still about. Uh, yeah. So that's on a, that was on a two-year um nine times out of 10 to make the stress testing work. It's been five year rates. So let's look at five year rates, 4.24 um, in a sole name and 4.69 is the best rate for limited company by select with a 7% fee. Ignore those. They're not going to be looking at if you just want a limited company by to let the best um, I could come up with for a 225,000 pound loan was 5.2%. Still comes with a four and a half thousand pound fee, um, but priced out over that five years was still the best rate I could come up with. Um, very similar with HMOs. The rate HMO rates are are fairly similar, but um, yeah, they're, they're. I think with anything with a with a buy to let at the moment, you have to you have to get your broker to really dissect the market for you. Um, making sure you get the best price. It's fantastic that you can get these fees added to the loan. And most lenders will let you add that to the loan and won't count it as part of your LTV. Um, some will, so be aware, but most won't. Um, but just think you're you're paying interest only 99.9% of the time on a buy-to-let. So you're just going to have a bigger, your bigger loan when we come to remortgage in five years' time. Yeah. Um, and you're paying interest on that. So although up front it looks fantastic, you've got to look, take some advice from your broker, make sure they're doing the work for you. Don't necessarily think that the uh, uh, the headline rate is the one for you. Even if the even if the seven percent, you know, if you've got a fairly small mortgage, the seven percent may not be as horrendous. Uh, still. I, I, I would I would still worry for most the majority of people, but you've got to people to speak to a broker about this. Get them get them to do some work for you. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, so the good news is that there are rates out there that start with a, a three or a four. Uh, the, the bad news is that the the rates that actually probably work out cheapest over the as in sort of total cost of lending over the term of the loan probably actually still start with a five which is slightly depressing yes but we're, we will try not to be too depressing and, and focus on the fact that hopefully fingers crossed rates will come down in the next few months <laughs> absolutely yes we've we we still think we can we can cling on to that i'm not <laughs> making a prediction as yet because i was so wrong last month um but yeah I, I, i'm i'm going to let's just say i'm going to predict that rate the base rate will come down at some point and that's <laughs> that's all i can put my hat on excellent well, well thank you very much for that that super precise prediction and thank you indeed for joining me for the, this episode of the business of property uh for anyone listening who would like to get in touch with you your contact details will be in the show notes and it only remains for me to say thank you very much simon and for everyone listening i will talk to you again next week